passage through Mirkwood. Mirkwood has long been a dangerous place, and recently one of King Thranduil's patrols has uncovered disconcerting signs of a gathering menace in the vicinity of Dol Guldur. A party of heroes has been assembled to carry a message through Mirkwood, down the Anduin and eventually to Lorien, to warn Lady Galadriel of the imminent danger. Hey everybody, welcome to Wolf Game. This is Brady, and thanks for joining me for a playthrough tutorial of the Lord of the Rings card game. And we are gonna be going through the first quest from the core set, so this will teach you how to play the game and we'll walk through the first quest with one of the recommended decks. Right out of the box, you're gonna find the cards are separated into four separate decks and each of these decks have three hero cards that you're going to be using for your quest. So if you pick this deck with the purple cards, you'll notice here in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a symbol. This purple symbol is the leadership symbol, and all the cards in that leadership sphere are going to have that purple color and that symbol as well. And in order to use cards from your deck, that have that same leadership symbol, then you need to have a hero in your deck with resources to pay the cost for that card. So here we have the spirit sphere. So you'll see that star symbol on the bottom. And these are the spirit heroes, tactics sphere. And you'll see that red sword icon in the bottom and our three Tactics Heroes. With the green book icon in the bottom is going to be for the lore sphere and the lore heroes. So the first thing you're going to do before starting to play is just pick which of these decks you want to use and then you'll leave the rest in the box. The next thing you're going to find in the box are quest encounter cards. So these, this is the quest card itself. This is going to tell us what we need to go take our heroes on their first adventure. So this is the first of the three quests in the box. So first we have it, this smaller line there, Passage Through Mirkwood, that's the name of our quest. And then each phase has a different title as we move through. And we're gonna find right here, this is telling us which encounter cards we need to put together to form a deck just really all the bad things that are come out, coming out at us. And then we take our heroes in a one or up to four player game, it's cooperative working together against these decks. So you'll see here, and this biggest symbol usually is signifying a specific set of cards that is thematically based for this encounter only or primarily. And then the other ones are secondary ones that are usually used in more than one quest. So we need all the encounter cards with this tree symbol, the goblin, and the spiders. So here we find a deck of cards. They all have those trees right here. And we'll put that together with this deck with all of the spiders. And this deck with the goblins. And if you're playing on easy mode, when you're building this deck, just pay attention for any cards that have this yellow circle around that icon. This just means that either the card itself or um, in some cases, just having a too high a quantity of certain cards will make the game quite a bit more difficult. So on easy mode, just take these out and put them back in the box. For this playthrough though, we will be putting them in with our encounter. Um, these are gonna be used throughout the game. This represents the resources that your heroes have. Each turn they're gonna gain a resource and then through card and um, hero effects, you can gain additional resources in certain scenarios. And then every card that you have the option to play is gonna have a cost usually between zero and five right here in this corner. And that means you need that many resources of this sphere. So again, if this is your first game, 
uh, we'll show you how that works. But that means if I wanted to pay for this card, I could not use any resources in Eowyn's resource pool because she's a spirit hero. She can only pay for the blue cards. And so I would need to use Aragorn or one of my other leadership heroes to pay for that card. And then these are just to indicate any wounds or damage taken by your heroes or by enemies that you're fighting or allies that you might bring out during the course of your adventure. And this here is just to indicate the progress that you're placing on each quest. So if we look here on this side of this card, each phase is gonna have an indicated amount of progress that needs to be made before we can proceed further. And as the cards come out here, they're going to try to slow us down. So if we come to an additional location, for example, we need more progress here before we can continue with our quest. So this deck here is essentially just trying to slow us down and prevent us from completing that quest in time. And then the last thing here that you're gonna be using for play is this threat dial or threat tracker. And if this number ever reaches 50 during your gameplay, the heroes lose their quest. Um, this essentially represents the Eye of Sauron and his awareness of the heroes and the intensity of his efforts to stop them. So essentially we're trying to track our threat avoid being too overly noticed by the power of Sauron and completing a request before that threat rises to 50. And the way that this doesn't start at zero, um, this is determined by which heroes you have in your starting deck. So let's take a look here at this leadership deck. If we were playing with the leadership deck, we have 12, eight, and nine. So this is their threat cost. We're gonna take those three numbers, add them together, so there's 29, and that's our starting threat. So we'll switch this to 29, and that would be where we'd start the game as the leadership. And it's gonna be slightly different for each different deck, and so you'll always adjust that. And then this essentially gives you a timer for how long the game is gonna last if you don't get through your quest uh, before this timer goes off. And at the end of each round, this is gonna go up by one. And then there's also um, a quest phase during each round where if you're not successful, that can raise your threat even more points. There's not really any limit to how much that could raise it. And then there's just some nasty cards in here that sometimes will require you to raise that threat even more. So this can get pretty tense as this is going up so we'll see how that works as well as we go along i'm going to use some of the suggested combined decks that you'll find in the rule book for the revised core set so we're just going to use today the leadership and spirit deck and then i'll also put together um, here on screen this lore lore and tactics deck for us as well and then once those are put together over the next couple playthrough videos, we'll take a look at both of these decks. Here we have it. So this is the Leadership Spirit deck. Here, let's just go through our heroes really quick. The first one here is Aon, And she is a noble of Rohan. She's a spirit hero. The biggest thing you wanna see here is this 
action, what she can do. So she can discard a card from her hand to give Aowen plus one willpower until the end of the phase. And this effect can be triggered by each player once each round. So if you're playing one player, that just means you can do that one time. If you're playing four player, each of the four players can do this each round for Aowen, regardless of who's playing her. And so let's talk about willpower right now as this is coming up in this ability. So right here, this number four, this is essentially her strength of will to move past and progress in as we're questing each round. So these locations that require those progress tokens, um, this is what allows us to place those progress both on our quest as well as these locations as we go through. So four is an immense amount of willpower and is going to be a huge help for us questing in this game. And while we're here, this is her attack power. So if she's joining in an attack against enemy and her defense. And this is the number of damage points that she can take before she's eliminated from the game. Our next hero is Aragorn. And he has this ability here, Sentinel. In this one player game, again, that's not gonna matter, but if you are setting up for a two or more player game, this means if you are playing Aragorn and somebody is defending an enemy that's too strong for them, you can use Aragorn's defense to help them out. Most of the time you can only defend or attack enemies that are specifically going against your heroes. But if you have that sentinel ability that lets you defend for another player that needs some aid. And his responsibility that we will be using in this game is after Aragorn commits to a quest, spend one resource from his resource pool to ready him. And so let's talk about readying really quick. So anytime you use a hero for an action, so let's say we use him to quest for his willpower, then that means you've used him for that round. He can't come out, he can't attack or defend or use any special abilities that he may have um, until the next round. Aragorn's ability then is really powerful if you have the resources because you can pay that one resource to use him again. And that's going to be really important because as we're questing, if we use him and we need it to make it through and then an enemy comes out and we need someone to defend or attack, it's really helpful to have somebody that can do more than one thing on a turn with an ability like that. And then this last one here is Theodrid. So here we have Eowyn's brother and his response is after Theodrid commits to a quest, choose a hero committed to that quest, add one resource to that hero's resource pool. So here you can see that these two heroes actually combine really well. So if we are going on a quest and we exhaust both of these, then Theodred immediately gets to give this resource to Aragorn. Or if Eowyn was on the quest, he can give that resource to Eowyn. If Aragorn takes it, he can then immediately use that resource and ready to go for the next thing he's needed for. So we'll see that in action, I'm sure. But that's what our heroes can do. So let's go ahead and get started with our quest. So the first step is making sure our threat tracker is at the right amount. So 8 plus 12 plus 9, we're at 29 threat starting out. And that will be up here acting as a timer for us through the game. And then we're going to check any setup instructions. Flies and spiders, you are traveling through Mirkwood Forest, carrying an urgent message from King Thranduil to the Lady Galadriel of Lorien. As you move along the dark trail, the spiders gather around you. Set up. Search the encounter deck for one copy of the forest spider and one copy of the old forest road and add them to the staging area. Then shuffle the encounter deck. Up here we have what's called the staging area. So this is essentially the threats that are upcoming. And we'll see as we move along that these are going to engage with us at some point in the game. So this first one is the Old Forest Road. And after you travel to the Old Forest Road, you can ready a character. So that's going to be something we're going to want to do as soon as we can. 
and right here you're going to see it has one threat so this is essentially the threat pushing against us in the questing phase and we'll see how that works here in a minute and then we have this forest spider which has two threat and then some attack and defense abilities there okay and now with that complete we flip this over and begin our quest stage 1b the nastiest things they saw were the cobwebs dark dense cobwebs with threads extraordinarily thick often stretched from tree to tree or tangled in the lower branches on either side of them there were none stretched across the path or whether because some magic kept it clear or for what other reason they could not guess and we need eight progress to move on to st stage two so now looking at our turn, phase one is the resource phase. So we get to gain resources and draw a card. And we start, I guess I should have done this before, we start with six cards in our hand already. And if you don't like what you get in your first go, you have the option to take a mulligan. So there's two cards right here. These are really good. Um, I like having these in my hand, but at the same time, I did not get a few cards that are really going to help us progress a little quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle those back into the deck and try one more time. And the official rules are you only get one mulligan and then you just have to stick with what you got. So we got Unexpected Courage, Gandalf. A Wandering Took, a Steward of Gondor, that's really the main one I was looking for, Calabrian Stone, and the Galadrim's Greeting. This is a really good hand. The only thing that could make it better was that Test of Will that I did discard there, but everything else is more what I wanted, so I'm happy with that. Okay, and just looking here show you a couple more icons as we're going. So this Wandering Took, you might wonder why they didn't just name him Pippin or give him a specific name. Um, this allows us to have more than one of this card in play at a time. So there's a few of these in the deck. If they all come out, we can play them all on the table. Um, but to make thematic sense, we can't have two cards with this symbol right here on the table at the same time. And this just means it's a unique card and almost always it's going to make sense it's usually a proper name it wouldn't make sense to have two aragorns on the table and this here there's only one steward of gondor at a time and so playing this card out means we can't play any other copies of it in our deck unless this one happens to get discarded after we play it um, so that symbol there just means it's unique so now we get to get in our resources so each hero is going to get one resource, and then we get to draw one more card. And a Silver Load Archer. And this ranged ability is essentially this the companion ability to Aragorn's Sentinel. So if you're playing two to four players and somebody else is fighting an enemy that's stronger than they can take out, he can attack some an enemy in somebody else's player area. So we'll add him to our hand. And now the planning phase. So this is where we get to decide how to use these resources and any cards in our hand. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this Steward of Gondor and it is an attachment, which means we're gonna attach it to one of our characters. So the instructions say attached to a hero Attached hero gains the Gondor trait. And here's the really cool thing. Action exhaust steward of Gondor to add two resources to attached to hero's resource pool. So I'm going to take these two leadership resources because these two heroes have that leadership icon and this card has the leadership icon. So I need to pay these two resources to attach this to Aragorn. 
stick it like so. And then again, that ability is if we exhaust it, uh, which is like I've shown you, if you tilt it to the side, it indicates you've used it that round. Because of the limited space, putting this token out here to indicate that he is exhausted, we've used that attachment there. And so we can't use it again this round. And then the ability that that gave us was two resources here on Aragorn. And so the next thing I think we want to do is spend those two resources that are leadership that we just got to attach Calabrian stone to Aragorn. So this one is attached hero gains two additional willpower. And if attached hero is Aragorn, he also gains a spirit resource icon. So now any resources that we have on Aragorn later in the game can pay for leadership cards, but also spirit cards. So this is a really good card to have in this first round of the game. And this restricted, um, essentially this means that he needs to use one of his hands to be using this. And so he can only have two restricted attachments. And if we looked at Suter of Gondor, it did not say restricted. And so we can add this on and we still have room for one more restricted attachment should we need to. The easiest way to remember that is most of the time they're some sort of a weapon and it you can't carry more than two swords or knives at a time and use them. So um, there's a limit of two restricted attachments. So we're gonna spend these two resources and put this up here on Aragorn. So we just need to remember now that he is, has a spirit icon as well as the leadership and he has a plus two willpower. So that's really all we can afford to do right now. Everything else left in our hand costs more than that one spirit resource we have here on Eowyn. So now we're gonna decide in our quest phase, who is going to commit to the quest this turn. So what does that mean exactly? So here in the staging area, um, if we had nothing up there, that would mean we were questing against zero threat resistance to our willpower. So if we had four willpower going to the quest, that would give us four points of progress here on our quest. But obviously that would be way too easy. So even if there is nothing in the staging area, after we commit to the quest, we send some characters out here then we have to take one of these cards off the top of the deck, flip it over, and if it adds threat to the staging area, that's going to subtract from our willpower that we're taking to the quest. So if that threat up here is more than our willpower, then we have to raise this number however many points of difference. Here in the staging area, we already have two and one, so three threat against us. So if I commit Eowyn to the quest, which I'm going to do, that puts four points of willpower against those three. So right now we're at a positive one. If we flip this over and it is another two or more threat, that means we have to increase this number. If it is less, then we don't have to increase that number. So if it, one more comes out, we've sent four, we get a break even. And so nothing's gonna happen. But we don't want that, we wanna make progress. And so we want to have well above what's in the th staging area as we're moving forward in the quest. So I am actually going to commit all three of these characters to the quest. And then the trade-off here is this spider here, at number 25, he's gonna come and attack us before the end of the turn because our threat is higher than that 25. And so you can always choose to attack something that's there, but you can't sneak by something that has a number lower than what your threat is 
and we're at 29 and he's at 25. So we need somebody to defend against that uh, forest spider. And so here's what we're going to do though, because Theodred, his ability lets us get one resource and we're going to give that to Aragorn. And then Aragorn gets to spend that resource and he's now going to ready and he's going to be ready to take on that spider, at least to defend against it. So now we have four and we have another four because of that Calabrian stone and then one from Theodred making nine willpower going against what's currently three threat in the staging area. And now we're going to see what comes out against us and we have a king spider. And as you can see, this one here has two threat and he is gonna go there into the staging area. So that is five threat against our eight, which means we get to put three onto the quest. So now we have a couple things that are gonna happen. So the next phase is the travel phase. We're on phase four, and that gives us the option to travel to a location that's in the staging area if we don't already have a location that we're actively progressing through. So we're going to go to the Old Forest Road, and after you travel to Old Forest Road, the first player may choose and ready one character he controls. So we are definitely going to ready Theodred. Okay, so now that removes threat from the staging area for next round. And then we now are going to engage these spiders. We have a 20 and a 25 right here. So both of these are going to engage us and attack us because they are below that threat of 29 that we have. And so if we were playing two player or more, what we would do in this phase here, so first we can make an optional engage. So the first player can choose to engage one even if it was higher than his threat, if he was confident he could take it out. And then after everyone's had a chance to do that optional engagement with one of the enemies, there's engagement checks. And that's where we're gonna look at these numbers here and see if they're going to attack us because of our threat level. And again, the first player does that. And then we're gonna see the highest threat card here out of the two. So that 25 would come and engage the first player. The second player would then make an engagement check with any remaining. And it just keeps going down until all of these have been checked. And if, so in this case, it just comes right back to us and we're taking both of those spiders this turn. So now we move into this combat phase and it's phase six. So deal shadow cards. So what that means is, we can even see an example of it. We're gonna put one of these here, starting with that highest threat enemy and moving down. And we're gonna see if these cards here, when we flip them over, have anything written beneath a symbol like this. So if there's this line going through with that skull, that means it's bad news for a shadow effect when in battle. If you just draw this normally, that doesn't do anything. We skipped this here, when revealed. So when this came out, each player must choose and exhaust one character he controls. Oh no. So Aragorn is exhausted and the forest spider, after he engages a player, we, he gets plus one attack until the end of the round. This is not looking good for our heroes. This might be a short game. First, we are going to decide who is going to defend against each of these two. So he has plus one attack and he just already has three attacks. So both of these are attacking for the same. So Theodred is going to defend against the forest spider. And then 
he is going to make an undefended attack, which means that our hero's defense is not going to come into play. So he's just going to hit Aragorn right on the chin, and we'll see what happens. So let's start here with Theodrid. Oh, and that was lucky. So there's no shadow effect. That symbol's not there. And this is a really bad card to get normally in the deck. So we just get to discard that. So that was good. And Theodrid has one defense here and four hit points. And our spider has two plus one, three attack. So the defense here cancels out one of those attack. And so we just get the one plus one, two damage on Theodred. And then he's just gonna remain there engaged with us. And now defending against the King Spider. And again, lucky with no shadow effect there. And Aragorn is just gonna take those three points of damage. And now, if we had any characters that were not exhausted at this point, we could choose to attack the spiders. But all of our characters have been used, and so we are just going to refresh. So we can ready all of our cards. And we increase our threat by one. And then if you're playing a multiplayer game, you're gonna pass the first player token to the next player. And now we swing back here to the resource phase. So we're gonna get some more resources. And I'm gonna go ahead and exhaust Steward of Gondor immediately to grab two more resources for Aragorn. And we draw another card. And now, Let's see. Let's see what we can do. We want some allies out here. What we're going to do is We're going to spend two spirit resources to put unexpected courage on Aragorn. And so this allows us to exhaust this card and ready Aragorn one more time. So he is just going to be doing triple duty for us. So let's make a little space for unexpected courage. So Steward of Gondor is exhausted. And then we are also going to spend two more resources. I'm going to take those from Aragorn because he has the spirit icon from that attachment. And we're going to place out a wandering took. And Essentially what we're doing here is we need somebody to defend against one of those spiders for us. And it's probably going to take him out, but it's going to keep our heroes from getting discarded from the game. So he's going to be sacrificed for the team of heroes here against those spiders. And that is all we can afford to do right now. So we're going to move on to our quest phase. That was the planning phase, spending our cards now we're going to decide who's going to go to the quest. Um, we don't have anything up against us there in the staging area right now. We do need to make three progress here and another five there before we can move on. Um, I think we need to move a little carefully with all the damage we have on these heroes already. So we are just going to exhaust Aowen for four. And we're going to leave everybody else ready to take on those spiders. And so now the next thing we are going to do is reveal one. And this is the mountains of Mirkwood. 
and there is no when revealed effect so we'll just look at what this says later and it's adding two threat to the staging area so we went with four points from aon and we're going against two and now i want to get rid of this old forest road we only have a positive two progress right now so what we're going to do instead is if we remember Awen's ability, we can discard a card to give her an extra willpower. And so I'm going to, we have two of these Galadrim's Greetings. I'm just going to discard one of these and get rid of that location with one more progress. We'll discard that one out of the game. And now our next phase is the travel phase. And so we... have Mountains of Mirkwood travel. Reveal to the, the top card of the encounter deck and add it to the staging area to travel here. And after this is explored, we can search the top five cards of our deck for a card and add it to our hand. So that's pretty good there. Not so great. We have to reveal one of these. So the East Bite Patrol and no one revealed effect, but that is going to attack us this turn as well. And things are not looking good. He has a three attack. The next step here is the encounter phase. So optional engage, and we're not gonna do it on purpose to ourselves, but his threat check is definitely well below that 30 we have up there. So he is gonna come out and engage with us as well. Not looking good for our heroes, but what we're gonna do is this Wandering Took, he is going to defend against the King Spider right here. And Theodred is going to defend against the forest spider. His attack is down to two again this round. So he gives Theodred a chance to survive. And then Aragorn will defend from that East Bite patrol. So deal the shadow cards. And let's see how our wandering took fares. And there is no shadow effect there, but he is taken out and discarded because that three attack took out his defense and his hit points. And I forgot to push this on Aragorn, who exhausted him. So he's there. And now the forest spider against Theodred. Uh oh, so choose and discard one attachment from the defending character. If this attack is undefended, discard all attachments you control. That was lucky. So he is attacking Theodred, who does not have any attachments. And if this had been undefended, we would have to get rid of all of these cards we played on Aragorn. So very lucky that Theodred was the one attacking with that shadow effect there and he takes one more point of damage if he takes one more he is out of the game and now Aragorn is going to defend with two defense against that three and raise defending players threat by four and if it had been undefended again raise this threat by eight so you can see why um, just choosing not to defend use a character to defend and just taking those hits can be extra nasty when you get some of these effects here. So we have to raise our threat by four points. We're up to 34. And now um, these are all exhausted, but I'm gonna exhaust this unexpected courage. And we are gonna use Aragorn to take out this East Patrol, uh, East Bite Patrol here, because he has one defense and two attack or two hit points, and Aragorn has three attack, which means we can discard him. Okay, let's see if we can make it through another round. Um, so getting to that 
the refresh phase. We're gonna ready all of our players, or our characters and attachments. And we are gonna raise our threat one more. That's moving up quickly, we're at 35. And if we were playing multiplayer, you would pass that first player token. So now we are going to hit that resource phase again. So we put one more resource on each and we draw a card. Sneak attack, this is just what we needed. And I will show you why here in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and exhaust Steward of Gondor to grab us two more resources. And let's have some fun with this. So we are going to start by playing this Silver Load Archer for three. Put him out right there. And that just gives a little more attacker willpower. And then we are gonna spend three to play the Galadrim's Greeting. So I'm gonna spend two spirit from Aragorn and one from Eowyn to play this event card. And that says re reduce one player's threat by six, or if you're playing multiplayer, reduce each player's threat by two, um, whichever you choose. And so obviously we're gonna Reduce our threat by six in a single player game. That puts us up to, back down to 29. And this sneak attack is gonna come out here in a minute. It's gonna allow us to put an ally into play for one phase of the game. And then if it's still in play afterwards, we put him back in our hand. And we have Gandalf and you see he's pretty expensive, but he has some awesome effects. So we're gonna see what that does for us here to help us get through these spiders. Uh, first off though, let's jump into our quest phase. So we're gonna send Eowyn to the quest and I think I am gonna send Aragorn and Theodred to the quest as well. So that's gonna give us nine questing again with that Calabrian stone. And we're going against nothing currently in the staging area. So let's see what that does for us. But first we're gonna use his ability put a resource here on Aragorn and then immediately spend it to ready Aragorn again. And now we reveal the Black Forest Bats. When revealed, each player must choose one character currently committed to a quest and remove that character from the quest. The chosen character does not ready. Okay, so we put this out there. It's going to attack us later, but then... Theodred is going to be removed from the quest. So that reduces our willpower by one. We still have eight going to the quest and we're only going up against one. So we get a whopping seven progress on this. So first off, we get to discard this Mountains of Mirkwood. And that allows us to, again, look at those top five cards of our deck and pick one and add it to our hand. So I'm gonna set this here for a second so I don't forget and add an additional four progress tokens there. And you know what? We're actually gonna do this really quick. Add a card to our hand. And let's see, let's take that sneak attack again for sure. Okay, and then we discard this one and shuffle this one. And I thought about using Eowyn's ability to finish off this quest to get that one more point, but all I have in my hand is Gandalf and two sneak attacks. I don't want to discard any of those. So let's go ahead and move on to... So the next step would be the travel phase. There are no locations. So we skip on to the encounter phase. So optional engagement, not optionally adding anything, but we do have to add these black forest bats out here to the staging area or to engage with us. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna play one of these sneak attacks with this resource 
on Aragorn. So we're going to put one ally into play, and then at the end of the phase, we get to put him back in our hand. So we're going to discard the sneak attack and put Gandalf out. So this says, um, at the end of the round, discard Gandalf from play. But we're going to put him back in our hand for, before that happens. And response, after Gandalf enters play, choose one of the following. You can draw three new cards, deal four damage to one enemy in play, or reduce your threat by five. And I think it's pretty obvious we're going to be damaging some enemies. So... We're gonna put him out and right, let's put him right here because he's leaving here in a minute anyways. And he is gonna do four damage to that King Spider and that's gonna take him out. And the cool thing too is you can actually ignore this defense. So if his hit points were even as much as four, that would still take him out. And now we just have these two guys to deal with. And so we're gonna put Let's see, how do we want to do this? <laughs> okay, we're going to take this one, Undefended, by Eowyn. Or I guess we'll assign it to Eowyn, whatever happens there, because she still has some hit points. And then Gandalf, I want him to attack. So we're going to defend this one with... Aragorn. So let's go ahead and exhaust him and hope we don't get a really bad shadow effect. So let's see what we can do here. Nothing. And that is very lucky. So we have two attack going against two defense, which means nothing happens. And we are safe. And I'm going to go ahead and immediately exhaust that unexpected courage to ready him to be prepared for the fight. And now we can do this. And again, no shadow effect there. And one damage, we're just going to assign that to Eowyn. And so this allows us to move on to the attack phase and we actually get to start attacking we've just been trying to survive these spiders the previous round so first off gandalf is going to attack for four against this forest spider and he has one defense and four hit points we need one more attack so we're going to take our silver load archer here as well and he's going to join in that attack with gandalf giving us a total of six attack um, and just so you're aware if you're attacking with multiple uh, characters at once that defense only comes into play one time if you make an attack and then later attack again in another round that defense is still going to apply each time and so that is going to destroy the forest spider and Aragorn here is still ready, so we're going to exhaust him to attack these Black Forest Bats. They have hit point of two and no defense. We're attacking for three. And there we go. Wow, that looks a lot better. And so because we used a sneak attack for Gandalf, we finished that combat phase. We're going to take him back into our hand. And now the refresh phase, so we're going to ready all of our characters and attachments. We're gonna raise our threat by one. That puts us up to 30. And then if we were playing multiplayer again, you would pass that first player token. And then we circle back around to our resource phase. So let's give everybody one resource and draw a card. And we get a son of Arnor. Okay. After Son of Arnor enters play, choose an enemy card in the staging area or currently engaged with another player and engage that enemy. So this is one that we would want to wait until we can use that against some enemies later. And now I'm going to go ahead and exhaust that Steward of Gondor and get a couple more resources for us. And then that allows us to go ahead and really just to get someone out there to defend and attack if we need to we're just gonna go ahead and pay for son of arnor right now and then 
we will hold on to this, but we have another Gandalf sneak attack ready should we need it. And we're going to go ahead and exhaust Eowyn for the quest. And we're going to exhaust Theodred for the quest. And we only need one more point here to finish this quest. We have seven tokens on it. We need eight. If you get extra, it's not going to carry over into the next quest. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave Aragorn ready and let him take that resource from Theodred here in a moment. So we're questing for five. And we have another King Spider. When revealed, each player must choose and exhaust one character he controls. <clears throat> we are going to exhaust the Silverload Archer. And then that adds two threat to the staging area. We still have a positive three. We get to complete that first stage of the quest. A fork in the road. As you move through Mirkwood, Hounded by spiders, the forest path forks before you. Unsure what lies ahead, but spurred by the urgency of your message, you choose a path and proceed. Forced, when you defeat this stage, proceed to one of the two, a chosen path stages at random. There's no locations to travel to here. And we have a king spider that is going to engage us for the encounter phase. And so now combat phase, we're going to defend against him with the son of Arnor. And he does not have a shadow effect there. That is still going to take out our son of Arnor card. So we'll discard him. And we will attack with Aragorn here. So we have three attack going against one defense and three hit points. That means we get to put two damage points on that King Spider. And you might ask, well, what about that unexpected courage? Can't you just ready him and attack him again? And the rules are you can only make one attack per round against any enemy so you'd have to have all your characters ready at the same time uh, to have a coordinated attack against him so i can't just ready him and attack him again i would have to have another enemy to attack instead for that to work um, and we could use our gandalf but i know there's some nastier things that might be coming out so we're going to hold on to him and just let this king spider hang out there for a moment so that ends the phase we're going to ready everybody and raise our threat to 31. And if you're playing multiplayer, again, pass that first player token and that ends the round back to the resource phase. So let's give a resource to everybody here and draw a card and we get stand and fight. Choose an ally with a printed cost of X in any player's discard pile, put that ally into play under your control. And that can belong to any sphere of influence and you can pay for it with those spirit resources. So that's a really good card. Let's just see what we have in our discard pile. And we might make use of that to get one of these allies back out in play. So let's go ahead and exhaust that Steward of Gondor. Have two more resources for Aragorn. And we'll play that Stand and Fight to bring out the wandering Took right here. We'll put him into play and that cost us two spirit resources. All right, so now let's move on to our questing phase. We only need two, there's nothing in the staging area. I think we're gonna do that same thing we did last time and put five to the quest and give Aragorn a resource there. Oh, this one's bad. Um, after Hummerhorns engages you, deal five damage to a single hero you control. Uh, luckily, the engagement cost is 40. 
So he's not gonna come out and he's only got one threat. We're just gonna try and leave him in the staging area if at all possible and sneak through the quest before we get to 40 threat. So we'll leave him there and we questing for five against one. We got four progress, we only needed two. We get to move on to stage three. So again, we have to randomly pick one of these. So just kind of shuffle them around. The chosen path. The trail winds into one of the darkest, most tangled parts of the forest. You sense that a foul, dark presence is hunting you, and you move quickly in an attempt to avoid its evil. Bayorn's path. You attempt to follow a secret, hidden trail to avoid the enemy. Players cannot defeat this stage while Ungoliant's spawn is in play. If players defeat this stage, they have won the game. We are going to hope that Ungoliant spawn does not come out of the encounter deck before we can get 10 more progress. Um, if she does, we have to take her out before we can finish the quest. And she's big and nasty. So we need 10 more progress. And right now we are going to move on to the travel phase. There's no locations. So we jump into the encounter phase. We're already engaged with the King Spider. And like I said, this one is gonna hang out there until we get to 40 threat. We are not optionally going to bring that one out to engage with us. So now the King Spider is gonna attack again. And this poor wandering Took just keeps coming out to fight this King Spider for us. And kind of like Bilbo in the forest, just distracting him and moving him different directions so that we have a chance to escape. He's gonna defend for us against the King Spider again. So we'll exhaust him and draw a shadow card. And that was very lucky. There's no shadow response. And this big, nasty Chieftain Uftak is not coming out against us. And he is a tough guy. You'd have to have nine attack to get rid of him. So we are going to discard him now. That uh, distraction from the Hobbit and the spider there worked really well. And now we have Aragorn ready with three attack. We just need two more to get rid of this king spider. So we'll exhaust him and take him out. And say farewell for now to the wandering took. So we can now ready all of our characters and attachments. We raise our threat to 32 and move on to the resource phase. So give everybody one more resource and draw another card. Another Calabrian Stone. Can't use it because we have one in play. If it had gotten discarded, we have an extra there. And also just because we wanted this to come out of the deck, we have multiple there waiting for us. But this is probably just gonna be used for her ability if we need some extra oomph to get us through those 10 quest points. So now we're gonna commit to the quest and we're gonna take everybody. So we have four, eight, nine, 10, and we're going up against one. And so, you know what we're also gonna do is we're gonna play this sneak attack right now. And this is gonna let us bring Gandalf out. He's gonna do four damage to that Hummer horn up there in the staging area. And if you happen to be playing by the scoring rules in the back of the book, uh, the rule book, this is an additional five victory points for your game. Um, really the purpose of that is just to help you keep track of how efficient decks are playing against similar quests. And it's kind of a convoluted process and most people don't use it. The fun of this game really is just beating the quest, whether you're playing by yourself or together, you're just working together to get through a really tough deck of enemies. So, um, but if you are doing scoring, that's what that victory five is for. So you would set this one aside from your regular discard pile to remind you you got those five points. Um, and now Gandalf is going to be in play for this 
quest phase, and he has four more willpower. So we are questing for 14 with nothing in the staging area. So let's, again, hope that Ungoliant spawn doesn't pop out right now and see what we can do. And it is mountains of Mirkwood, and it's only two threats. So that is going to give us 10 glorious progress. So there's five. And if you have the revised core set, um, there are three and five denominations of all of these tokens. Um, the original set, they're all just ones, which is fine. So it's a little bit more cluttered there. So we have 10 progress on Bayorn's path. So we have successfully completed the passage through Mirkwood. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial and playthrough of the Lord of the Rings, the card game, and this first quest, Passage Through Mirkwood. Tune in to Wolf Game for upcoming additional playthroughs of Lord of the Rings, the card game, as well as a lot of tutorials and playthroughs of all sorts of different board games and card games, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. What are you still doing in there? Do you mean to say you stayed for that entire video? I guess that means it's time for another game. Click below to subscribe and we'll get another game to the table.